the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is risen. Uh, today is the sixth uh, Sunday of the Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection Feast that we celebrate. Um, and it's the Sunday, as you probably know already, um, between the Feasts of the Ascension and the Feasts of the Pentecost. Um, <clears throat> and uh, today the Gospel is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16. And we, as we said before, um, this is one of the chapters of the Paraclete, uh, the collection of his discourses and the last events before the crucifixion of our Lord in between the eve of Thursday and um, the day of Great and Holy Friday. <clears throat> and here the Lord is preparing for us, not just for the disciples, life after his death or life with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and that's why in the church selected this passage for today, where he is saying, um, I go to the Father. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. <clears throat> and um, in the same chapter, which we didn't read today, but he says, it is your, to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, or the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. <clears throat> um, and then he also says, a little while and you will not see me. Again, a little while and you will see me. And the Fathers explained this to be uh, the days in between the the crucifixion and the resurrection, and followed by the resurrection appearances. <clears throat> so um, in, a, in a sense, we're returning full circle. Um, the Lord, before his return to the Father, explains the divine plan. Um, and basically, the plan is everything returns to what it came from, right? Just like when he said with Adam, Adam, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But he was just talking about his body. Um, and uh, St. Paul explains further when he speaks about the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15, the chapter of the resurrection. He says, as we have borne the image of the man of dust, or Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, or Christ. <clears throat> so we return, the, the, the whole purpose of this feast is, is not only to celebrate what happened with Christ, but because he took the, our flesh, because he took the human nature, the events are, are different because we are with him or he prepares the way for us to follow in his steps as the fathers teach us. Um, <clears throat> so um, in the, the last verse, which we normally focus on and probably focus on today as well, he says, in the world, you will have tribulation. But we could even add, in the world, you will have tribulation just as I had tribulation, um, as speaking you know, for, for the Lord Christ. <clears throat> But then he says, but I have overcome the world just as you will overcome the world. Um, so this victory that we speak of is not just the victory of Christ or the victory of good over evil, but it's the victory that we can have over evil, over death, over sin, over all that is darkness. <clears throat> and so um, you've heard the common phrase, you know, the struggle is real. Um, we all face various struggles, whether at work or school or traumatic experiences that we might face or sickness or loss of, of, of a loved one or spiritual struggles even or different relations in our lives. And we know that there's struggles and trials and crosses and tribulations out there, but we often forget that the victory is real too. And sometimes we focus on the struggle and we forget the victory. And so the Lord is telling us today, no, the victory is real. And it's not just my victory, but it can be yours too. And it is yours. <clears throat> and so um, um, even when we look at tribulation, we look at it with a different lens. Um, sometimes the tribulations in our life um, continues until we gain the benefits of them and learn the lessons that we need to from them. And so God doesn't want to punish us with these sufferings, but rather reward us and teach us and use us for a greater purpose. <clears throat> and so... Um, uh, let's speak a little bit more about this victory. <clears throat> so um, we know that the Lord overcame the world, right? And he defeated everything, and he defeated death. But what do we say in the hymn, Christ is Risen? How did he defeat death? By, by death, right? It's counterintuitive almost. And St. Augustine says, well, where is death? Uh, seek it in Christ, for it exists no longer. It did exist, and now death is dead. This is how the fathers explain it, <clears throat> uh, based on, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse where um, St. Paul is asking, where, where, death, where is your sting? Hades, where is your victory? Um, <clears throat> so um, oftentimes, 
Uh, and St. John Chrysostom uh, speaks more clearly about, look at how Christ overcame death. He says, uh, Beloved, you know the achievement of Christ and the glory of the victory of the cross. Now let me tell you something even more remarkable, the manner in which he gained victory. <clears throat> and you will marvel even more, he says. Christ conquered the devil using the same means and the same weapons that the devil used. Um, he continues by saying, um, let me tell you how this occurred. The symbols of our fall were a virgin, a tree, and death. He says, the virgin was Eve, for she had not yet known a man. And there was the tree, um, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. And the death was Adam's penalty. He said, again, these three things of our destruction, the virgin, the tree, and death, became the tokens of our victory. He says, instead of Eve, there was the Holy Virgin Mary. Instead of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the wood of the cross. Instead of Adam's death, the death of Christ. He says, do you see then that the devil was defeated by the very means that he used to conquer? <clears throat> um, and I think we mentioned this example before, but same thing with David and Goliath, right? We know that David used the, the, the sling to, um, to throw the stone in, at Goliath's head. But how did, Goliath wasn't dead at that point. How did he kill Goliath? The sword, whose sword? Goliath's sword, right? So here is the symbol of the same thing um, that Christ um, defeated the devil and death and evil by the same power. <clears throat> well, what does this um, mean for us? <clears throat> um, St. Athanasius says, um, Whenever we have suffering and troubles and hard work, the enemy comes along and does everything he can to make us fall. But the person who is in Christ can be victorious by setting himself against the opposition, meeting anger with long-suffering, insults with meekness, vice with virtue. Then he can triumphantly exclaim, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and in all things we are conquerors through Christ who loves us. <clears throat> um, that was actually the first verse that we read today in the following this. Um, and then he says, this is the grace of the Lord. So, um, more specifically, if you're consumed about anxiety or worry about your safety or your health or your work or, or finding peace, well, the, the key is not necessarily to just stop worrying, but what we should worry about. We should worry about our salvation. We should go to Christ. We should find our safety and our joy and our peace and our health in him, even though we're talking about the spiritual health, not the physical we're talking about the, the heavenly peace, not the worldly comfort, right? So it's just a transformation of how we see things, not of how things are. We shouldn't ask God to transform um, our life outwardly, but our heart inwardly. Um, <clears throat> and so when he transforms our heart, then we see things differently and we don't need anything from, from the external. We just need him. <clears throat> and so um, if we're kind of like we've mentioned before, if we're constantly consuming things, whether food or drink or media, to find that joy and to fill that void, um, well, we actually need to empty ourselves further. We need to empty ourselves of the worldly things and fill ourselves with the heavenly things. Um, <clears throat> so basically, yes, we have the void, but we're filling it with the wrong things, and it's not, it's not um, quenching our thirst for God. If you're looking for rest or peace or comfort, we need, actually need to work harder, but we need to toil for the kingdom, not for for the world. We need to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Um, that doesn't mean we don't work, but um, sometimes we say, okay, now I need to go to work harder. Well, maybe we need to uh, to toil a little bit more in our spiritual life and then see what happens. <clears throat> so um, same thing, if you're looking for love or acceptance, which we all do, um, Maybe we shouldn't just expect it from others, but look to him who out of his gracious love gave himself for us. Then we say, I'm already, I already have it. I'm already full. I am already rich, like St. Paul says. Um, <clears throat> says. So when you're filled with this love, then you don't want to take anymore, but you want to give. You want to be more like him. Um, and so um, sometimes we need to lose the battle in order to win the war. Um, Sometimes we need to take the second place in order to attain the, the rewards in the heavenly kingdom. We need to walk the second mile in order to find the Savior. <clears throat> I need to give up my bread to consume the bread of life. Um, so if you're trying to, so the same thing happens with ascension, right? In, in this world, in this day and age, the whole objective and 
in, in uh, society is to ascend and to climb the corporate ladder um, or to gain acceptance um, or and to feel like you have accomplished something. Um, but God teaches us, no, we conquer and rise by descending further. Um, we need to descend before we can ascend, right? Uh, Christ descended, uh, sorry, descended to us so that he can ascend with us. Um, and so sometimes we haven't reached low enough in order to be able to not be affected by anything of this world. Um, we need to go to the lower place. And you know how, like they say, the taller they are, the harder they fall. Sometimes we're tall with our pride or we're, we're tar tall with our expectations from others. Um, and until we humble ourselves to the point of being earth or dust or the ground, um, then, then no one can touch us because we're already at the lowest place. Um, then we can ascend. <clears throat> so um, the whole objective sometimes in our spiritual life is to humble ourselves to the point of uh, where God will exalt us in, in due time. And so this is the dying to the self. This is the emptying of the self that the Lord Christ gave us as the perfect example for. Um, <clears throat> so we're only victorious if we do that first step. Um, sometimes we just want the victory, but we don't want, um, we want the ascension, we don't want the descension. Um, so, uh, but the mystery is that when we descend, when we humble ourselves um, to, to the point of, of where we can't humble ourselves anymore, actually, Usually, we can't get to that state until you know, the end. But that's when we find Christ. Uh, that's when we see the, the transformation happening inside of us. And so, um, like St. John Chrysostom says, we who seemed unworthy of earth are now raised to heaven. Right? And that's the experience of the grace. Sometimes we take advantage of the grace because we don't understand the depth of, of what God has truly done for all of us and for each one of us individually and personally. <clears throat> and so um, uh, it's, it's a constant cycle of rising and falling. Um, and so this season is an end of sorts um, because the Lord ascends to heaven, but it's also, like we said, a preparation for a new beginning. Um, and the cycle continues, but in different ways with different people, right? So um, one of the spiritual fathers gave a good example of, you know, the gospel itself as a whole. In the beginning of the gospel, the gospel according to St. Matthew, or towards the beginning, right, we read of the Sermon on the Mount in, in the first few chapters, and the Lord God is giving us the model, the example of, of who we should become like, like himself, right? And then at the very end, um, as, as we read from today, um, in the last discourse, or even in, in the amount of the ascension, right, <clears throat> um, the Lord tells the disciples, what is the last thing that he tells them in the, the gospel according to St. Matthew? Says, Go to all the nations, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and with you always into the age, end of the age. Right? And so that's when they got their final marching orders. Sometimes we think, well, what do I need to do? Yes, we need to do things, but... I think the more important question is who do we need to become or who do we need to be like in order to, before we do anything. So that's why he told his disciples um, at the ascension, what, wait, wait for 10 days, pray, uh, prepare yourself because you need to be transformed even further by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so sometimes we're over-focused on what I need to do and we forget who we need to be. Um, and so that's why uh, the whole gospel kind of puts these two brackets for us, um, starting with the model and the, the need of transformation and then the service. So that's why the book of Acts comes after the gospels. Um, so in Matthew 1, we hear of the Savior and who, who is to come and his name, uh, Emmanuel and Jesus, right? God with us and the Savior. <clears throat> um, and we always have the men, the the, the teaching to remind us we're not alone, right? He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages, or now, uh, today, and forever into the end of the ages. 
right? <clears throat> and this concept of um, here, the Lord says, the hour is coming, yes, and how has now come that you will be scattered each to his own. He's talking about the events of the crucifixion and will leave me alone. But then he says, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me, right? Um, and so we have to feel the same way in our tribulations. I'm not alone because God is with me, God the victorious Lord. Um, and, and this feeling of, of abiding in God and he in us gives us the power. Um, and sometimes we ignore it or forget it or uh, we belittle that, that um, grace. Um, and that's what makes us feel that we are not alone and that we have power, um, but we need to just wait until the Lord transforms us and then uses us um, in, in the way he wishes um, <clears throat> so, um, like we said, we have to have uh, the spirit of Mary before we can do the service of Mark. Um, and the sons of thunder had to become children of the cross and children of the light before they became fathers of the church. Um, and after the end of the gospel, then, then we have the of the apostles, um, even though they were doing things uh, throughout the gospel, and he sent them out even during the time of his life, but we, we don't see what, exactly what happened, and we only hear about how they cast out demons in his name, and but that wasn't the point. Um, the Acts of the Apostles starts with the Pentecost, or actually the Ascension, and then the Pentecost. Um, so those acts were not important because Christ was among us, and the transformation was still um, occurring um, within the disciples. Um, and so um, we also need to, and, and again, the cycle continues with us. That's why we said, you know, that the book of Acts does not end as many of the New Testament uh, books with amen, because it's not over. And usually, um, in, in a couple of weeks, after we read the book of Acts, what do we read? the Synexarium, the lives of the saints, because that's the continuation of the Holy Spirit's work in the church through the lives of the saints, and hopefully um, with the life of each and every one of us. And so um, once we're being transformed into the image of Christ, then he asks us to, to work with him towards the trans same transformation for the, for the sake of others. Um, and it, it never stops until we depart from, from this body. Um, but the service actually transforms the person from glory to glory as well. Um, so uh, I know we've talked about this before, but where do we tap into this power? Well, God has given us many things, right? Um, he's given us scripture. Like he says, I, our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. So we have power through the scriptures that we read. It's not just power to understand and to learn and to remember, but to grow. Um, and that's why the Holy Word of God um, needs to be read in the context of prayer and the spirit of love and humility so God can give me power to live according to it. Um, and that's why, as we've said before, we pray the litany of the gospel before we read the gospel because we need it to transform us, not just to fill our understanding. Um, <clears throat> and um, the Lord says, you know, ask and you will receive um, in my name that your joy will be full. Um, so uh, there's there's so much more to say, but I think um, we'll we'll conclude here by um, describing the importance of not losing sight of the goal, which is the heavenly kingdom, and the means that we have victory through Christ is by using the same weapons um, that attack us, um, used by transforming our thoughts and understanding to even go to the lower place and, and to empty ourselves like Christ did. So then we get the power from him and not from ourselves. May the grace and the blessing of the ascension and the resurrection and the transfiguration be with us that we may live and shine with his image. And glory be to him now and to the age of